Hello, topic 3.4. We're almost done, you guys. Oh my gosh, the year's semester is coming to an end. Okay, inheritance. Whew, there's so much review in this lecture that there's a lot that I um, printed out for you and that I don't need you to write down again. And then a couple things I do. So trying to figure out how to organize this best way. Um, so you should have two different things. You have your, uh, let's see, topic four, right? These are the notes. Oh, here, actually you cannot see there because it's really dark in here. So you should have this out right here, right? Which is uh, the 3.4 diagrams, I'm sorry, um, questions and diagrams. You're gonna do a lot of this in class, but some things I do need you to do at home. And then you should also have out your, um, the key concepts, so this one, right? So with all these modes of inheritance, because there's a lot of stuff that we've already gone through in here, and I don't need you to write down again, but it's good to have it all together in one place. Okay, so I'm gonna be trying to say like, write this down, don't write this down throughout the lecture. Um, let's see, here we go, okay. Inheritance, so many things that we've learned about kind of building on each other, right? So first of all, like uh, genes, chromosomes, um, protein synthesis, um, asexual versus sexual reproduction, this all coming together in like an application of like why we look the way we do and how inheritance works, right? So where those genes are passed on and not. We're gonna go back and review Mendel. Um, hopefully you have some memory of Mendel and his peas, and if not, that's okay. Um, review some different vocab with uh, heterozygous, homozygous, things like that. The different ways we inherit, so complete dominance, recessive, we've already talked a little bit that with pedigrees. I'm gonna review punnet charts and look at some genetic diseases. Okay, all right, let's talk about Mendel a little bit and the principles of inheritance. All right, so who Mendel was? Mendel was actually not a scientist. So on your worksheet, talks about Mendel's, wait, here it is, yes. Mendel's conclusions and his experiments. So make sure you write this stuff in. All right, so Mendel was a monk. He lived in a monastery and he liked to garden. And he's actually what we call like the founding father of genetics because what he would do is he started getting like, started noticing that sometimes like the plants, pea plants would have these interesting features like white flower, purple flower, and that sometimes it would skip a generation and then come back the next generation. So he started purposely breeding plants with traits, right? So this was, it started out kind of random and then he went on purpose. So he did what's called um, pure breeding plants with different traits. So when you pure breed, you're using the same plant um, and using those genes and mixing those together. So he would take things like tall and short and mix them together. Um, I'll show you in the next one, his experiment, his conclusions, but you'll write that down, right? It says drawing class, Mendel's experiments, um, but, what he discovered is the couple things from pea plants. So first of all, one of his conclusions, the offspring produced only one of the traits. There was never a blend with peas. So it's not like we got white with purple spots, right? There's white or purple, tall or short, green, yellow, things like that. And that the traits were often inherited in this ratio, that three of them were tall, one of them was short. So there's always a 75-25% ratio with whatever trait he was looking at. So that was his kind of noticings. He had no idea of dominant recessive, no idea of inheritance at the time. This is where just his um, observations, okay? So again, you can write this down in class or kind of put it out, but here is um, some more numbers. So here's the other things he looked at. Flower, color, height, the seed color, shape, pod color, pod shape. So he looked at kept all these numbers and figured out for each one, there was one that he called the dominant trait, the one that showed up 75% of the time, and then the recessive trait that showed up 25% of the time. All right, and he figured out these ratios. Um, this is actually the first time I've actually seen this in this um, PowerPoint. This um, statisticians believe that the results were too precise to actually be genuine. I've never seen that before. I've learned that Mendel oh, is the, uh, the father of genetics. Um, however, he did use a lot of data to show these percentages, right? So he figured out the number of purple and white and then figured out the ratio. You guys have done something like this before, okay? And here were his conclusions. So in that box where it says the Mendel's conclusions, here's what he came up with and then versus what we understand now. So he knew that there were factors that were passed on, right, inherited we now call those genes, right? See how this is like, all of this is review right here. This is kind of what Mendel said. He said that there's versions. We now call those alleles. 
He said that parents only pass on one. We call the gametes haploid, but then they come together, which are called diploid, and there's only one version that is expressed, right? So these were his, his conclusions. This is our current understanding. We have gone through all of this side right here. We're just kind of linking it back to Mendel right now, okay? Um, here are a couple of his laws and his observations, right? So in your worksheet here, when it's talking about um, uh, the conclusions and this area here, we're going to write down the independent assortment segregation. Um, wait, wait a second. We already did law of, I'm going through this like this, do, 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 do. separation gene like that. We've already gone through independent assortment. You have not done segregation. So let's add that. Right? So you don't need to do independent assortment, um, um, but you do need to do this law of segregation. Okay, so that when haploids form, they segregate to separate sides, right? The alleles separate to separate sides. Um, we learned about crossing over. That's what it was. Okay, um, and the principle of dominance says that if I have that dominant, it will mask the recessive. I only see the recessive when I see two. Um, his kind of like caveats to the rules was that not all traits do show that, right? We found that out, and but then some genes on some chromosomes do not independently sort. Sometimes they're always linked together, right? So those were his laws. All right, so looking at the mechanism of inheritance, right? So moving on, don't need to write this down. We've already have genes and alleles in our notes, but just a reminder that a portion of a, a um, chromosome is called a gene and that it carries the directions for a specific, I'm sorry, it's called an allele, gene codes for allele. So, so this codes for a very specific um, um, protein, right? So this gene codes for the protein. The different versions of those are called alleles, right? The alternate forms of the gene. So you have two chromosomes. One might have the allele for brown eyes, one might have for blue, right? So these are all potential alleles. So here's the eye color, here's the hair color, keeping it very simple here, right? And then here's the alternates, okay? So genes, alleles, review. Diploid, haploid, review. Don't write it down. We know that they're located at loci, right? That we get them from both parents, that we get diploid resulting from haploid. This is all just review that's going to come up to our Punnett squares, okay? So don't need to write this down. It's on your sheet already. Don't worry about it, okay? All right, so here is the allele segregation, right? So um, we've already looked at this in meiosis. The only thing I think I want you to add here or put somewhere in your notes here, um, is meiosis separates a little bit separate a bit reduction division was that in your notes for meiosis hmm. scan back if not write it down so remember this is called reductive division in bat I, I think it was that it doubles first and then it divides and then it divides so that by the second division here i get half the amount um and that we get random assortment we get crossing over and now we've learned about the law of segregation unless they are linked right so now we're looking at these gametes Still building up to Punnett squares. Okay, sexual reproduction, already have this one too. Zygote, random fertilization, egg, sperm, meeting together, all those different copies. Don't write this down, I'm skipping it. Okay, here's some new information and this is on your modes of inheritance looking at um, zygos, zygosity. Ooh, fancy word. All right, so homozygous, heterozygous, and hemizygous. Uh, three different uh, allele types. We've already talked about homologous chromosomes. We talked about how their root um, homo means same, hetero means opposite. So and now I'm leading up again to Punnett squares. If I have homozygous alleles, they are the same. So two capital letters, two lowercase letters. It doesn't matter if they're dominant recessive, homozygous means the same. Hetero means opposite. So on one side, I've got capital, another side recessive, right? So dominant recessive. Hemizygous means that there's only one. There's only one allele. Right, so um, for instance, on your um, X and Y chromosome, right? So males only have one X chromosome, so they're called hemizygous, right? We talked about some sex linked things. So hemizygous combinations occur in males and um, the Y doesn't cover up for us. So homo, hetero, hemi, put it in your notes. It's on that worksheet, okay? Genotype versus phenotype. We talked about this in our pedigrees. So make sure you have that in there. So my genotype is the allele combination. My Phenotype is what it looks like, the physical expression. So starts with the letters, whatever happens in the environment that makes it express, and the phenotype is blonde hair, okay? Um, I don't think we talked about very much about the environment, that phenotypes are influenced by the environment sometimes, um, what it's exposed to, what type of nutrients, um, 
couple different things um, that can influence. So if you don't have that in your notes from last time, let's just add that there, right? So that our genotype and phenotype can, our genotype is not influenced by the environment, but our phenotype can be. All right, here we go, leading all the way up to Punnett squares. All right, so in your, um, before I actually move on this one, I'm going back, um, but in your worksheets, you have a lot of different, where it says in class practice, um, for practicing of your Punnett squares. And at the very bottom of your, I'm looking at this first one, it talks about complete dominance versus co-dominance. So we're gonna write this down here. Um, okay, monohybrid, we're looking at a single trait, right? So we're only looking at hair color or eye color or, uh, you know, yellow or green, right? So just one trait, um, we are either gonna have complete dominance, co-dominance, or some type of sex link linkage. And I'll totally show you how to set that up, okay? If I talk about complete dominance, that means like, if the, you know, white and purple, see the purple, right? So that one's completely. Codominance is when they are both expressed. And I'll show you some examples of that in a second. Um, and sex linked is when they're on the X and Y chromosome. Remember that in modes of inheritance, we're always figuring out my probabilities and my ratios of the offspring having that um, certain trait, okay? Here is a Punnett square. Gonna do so much practice this in class, all right? I know some of you guys had already seen this, and then I know some of this is review. So if you feel super confident with Punnett squares, you can kind of just like, yeah, yeah, I remember how to do this. If you've never seen one of these, um, we'll practice setting it up, but um, we put the males and the females alleles on different um, squares. A lot of you guys do uh, work this in like IM1 for like looking at crosses of um, like X plus one and X plus two. Um, we always pick a, a letter right? So if it's not given to you, pick a letter. Capital is going to be dark. Um, lowercase is going to be light. We then write them out in the boxes, right, above, and then we use the grid to pull up and a down, right? So this one goes up, this one goes down. So at the end here, I have four genetic possibilities. These are not the four, a lot of times, like, they're the four kids or they're the four, like, results. No, these are the four possibilities. So I'm always looking at the percentage of like what percentage of the offspring uh, would you predict to be, you know, red? What percentage would you predict to be light red, right? So this shows the percentage in my Punnett squares. We'll do all that practice in class, okay? So complete dominance, black and brown come together, black wins. So I only see the brown if I have those two lowercase, right? Here's uh, co-dominance, and then we'll get incomplete. Co is when um, they're notated, so you actually use a letter uh, and then have the alleles on it. So co-dominance, so here's black, here's speckled, here's white, right? So if I have a black and white present, I will actually see both. If I just have the black allele, I'll just see black. If I just have white, I'll just see white. So co-dominant is when I have both that are equally seen in full, right? So there's not type of blending. Um, our biggest example of codominance is blood type. So if you guys switch on over to after your practice, looks like it's page three. So page three of your notes, you can go ahead and fill in this chart. Um, blood type is just looking at different proteins that are created. So you have A protein, B protein, positive, negative, like it's present, it's not. And so our four different blood types that you need to know are four different possibilities, A, B, A, B, and O. Um, A and B are codominant, and they are both dominant over um, O or I, which is like the lack of a protein, right? So it's not necessarily there's something there, there's nothing there. So I'll see those two things, right? So if I have A and B, um, then I have AB blood. If I have A with this um, lowercase O, then I have O, right? I'm sorry, then I have A. If I have B with a lowercase, I have B. If I have both, AB. If I have neither, I have O blood, right? And then we'll talk about positive, negative in a second. So those are the four different types of blood. Sex linked is when it is linked to the X chromosome. There are very few on the Y. We talked about that a little bit already, but they're linked on the X. That means that the female has two versions of it and the male only has one. So if the male um, inherits a sex linked chromosome, right? So an X that has, um, uh, oh, I guess, um, what we looked at? Hemophilia on there. We looked at um, uh, hair type, right? So pattern, male pattern baldness. Um, if he inherits that recessive, nothing to cover it up so he has the trait. So females can be carriers, males cannot. We talked about this in our pundits, or not our pundits, I'm sorry, our pedigrees, okay? Here's just a quick comparison. I talked about how the X, the Y chromosome doesn't do very much. Um, X has over 2,078, 153, 
50 million. So not much coded for here on my Y chromosome. Okay. All right. So when I'm looking at the sex linked inherited, this is just a little bit of a visual. You don't need to write this down, but you're just looking at this like the father only has that one right here. And so the sons are more affected than um, the daughters. If I have a mother that is affected, right, because they don't have that father's to um, to uh, cover it up, right? Remember that if it's a son that they definitely got the Y from the father and um, males always get their X from the mother, right? They never get the father's. All right, pedigrees, we already done two, yay. So that's the last page there um, and you already have some notes on this, so don't worry about this. This is another kind of way to backward map our Punnett squares and we'll do some practice on that in class. Okay, um, genetic diseases. So this is the very last part. So genetic diseases, um, you don't have all of this in one place. So if you go to that sex link, where is it? Oh no, where's the genetic diseases? Oh my gosh, you guys can follow it. I'm in the dark. Okay, genetic diseases. If it's not on there, let's write it in the margins. Maybe I'll leave a place in there. I'll look for it. Oh, it's the very last page. There it is, sex linked and not. All right, so there's a couple different ways that we can have genetic diseases. So we talked about single genes, point mutations, insertion, deletions. We can have chromosomes, right? Um, whether they're linked together or they're abnormal in some way, or there's a deletion of an entire thing. We can also though get um, genetic diseases from mitochondrial and then these multifactors that come together. So mitochondrial diseases and then polygenetic disorders. So let's look at some examples of those in our next slide, right? Um, our single gene disorders, we talked about those single bases. Um, some examples that we looked at in pedigrees are Huntington's and cystic fibrosis. Um, Huntington is a dominant disorder. Um, cystic fibrosis is a recessive. Um, sickle cell anemia is actually um, an auto uh, co-dominant, right? So that's where I get that funky shaped um, blood cell and uh, looking at how, I think I showed you the shape where it's like a normal shape and they're kind of moon shaped. And then X-linked recessive things like hemophilia and then red green um, color blindness and also things like male pot, uh, pattern baldness. All right. Um, in class, we're going to look at these Huntington's disease, the cystic fibrosis, and the red green color blind and hemophilia. So we will look at all of these in class. You don't need to write those down into your notes. Um, but here's just a reminder of the mutagens that we talked about two lectures ago. Um, they mutate in some reason. So they talked about that there's things from the environment and things from your genes. Here's a reminder of all those different physical, chemical, and biological that you did in 3.1. Again, already have it written down. So just a reminder of the things that can cause those, um, that some of them are from physical, like actually altering. Some of them are from things we put into our body or, or in our environment, and then biological viruses and bacteria that can actually mutate DNA. All right, very last one, not in your notes, all right? So the radiation explosion, um, I'm sorry, exposure, uh, is something that it causes a physical change. And uh, these are some pretty, uh, what do I say, like horrible examples and uh, long-term effects. So we can actually look at long-term studies of radiation exposure, um, both in the Chernobyl, which is a nuclear power plant that melted down in the mid 1980s, um, complete accident, versus something very intentional like the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima in 1945. So looking at long-term, um, consequences of radiation exposure. Okay. Uh, so the bombing killed more people, but the meltdown, which is where we actually saw the um, deterioration of the nuclear bomb, uh, released more persistent radiation, which is called bioaccumulation. So over time, accumulating that persistent radiation um, that causes long-term effects. Long-term health consequences that we saw um, was definitely cancer and immune, immune activity, um, white blood cells, um, really low levels of our T cells, which are fight off uh, immune disorders, and what we call congenial abnormalities. So um, congenial are looking at physical traits that are changed. And then we only saw this in Chernobyl, looking at the nuclear, of the nuclear meltdown. Um, and um, I think, yeah, I think there is something that we can look at. And yeah, I have a, um, a not a documentary, but a short little um, clip we can watch on that too for Chernobyl, right? Okay, that brings us to the end. I know that that sounds like a very long lecture, but tons of review, hopefully not much that you wrote down. Um, tons of um, practice in class with Punnett squares, already gone through those pedigrees. 
Um, but this is just kind of bringing it all together. So any new things, make sure you have written down like genotype, phenotype, uh, Punnett scores, if you didn't already go through that. But other than that, we are finished. And our next one, we're going to be talking about genetic modification. All right. Um, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a fabulous, fabulous day.